All right, Jason Rona back here at the Summer Indoor Nationals. We're here with Ron Schur. He's our uh, stock and 17.5 guru. So we wanted to talk a little bit about some stock racing here uh, this weekend. Uh, one thing I noticed right away when I went up and looked at the heat sheets is uh, we have a huge turnout this weekend uh, in the stock buggy class. Also, the 13.5 four-wheel class. Uh, we got five heats of uh, sportsman stock we got four heats of expert stock and then there's another four of 13.5 four wheel uh, so right there you know we, we got a, a great um, base of uh, drivers here racing in that class and uh, Ron you're, you're here you have uh, drivers and you have other people that uh, you know you help and support that you race Correct. a lot of stock yes. uh, you know what are you seeing here this weekend and uh, what's your excitement level for the 17 Five and uh, thirteen five class. Well, as we left off <coughs> last time we spoke, uh, the fact that you've split it off to expert and sportsman seems to have energized the whole stock class. Mm -hmm. um, thirteen five uh, four wheels just uh, just perfect for that car because there's enough drag in it. The seventeen five was really no fun to drive. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit too doggy, I'll call it. Yeah, overheated stuff like that. Yeah, um, just quickly. I think we should probably do that with short course and possibly even stadium truck. Mm -hmm. But no, the 17.5 is exciting. I mean, it's good to see all these people here running. There's some really, really tough competition in the expert stock. I yeah. mean, there it is going at it. Uh, I mean, Drayton, I mean, I think his seating time would have put him 12th and modified. Yeah. And the second place guy wouldn't have been very far behind. So this, yeah. the stock guys are performing maybe too well. Uh, mm -hmm. And it could be a case, too, of... Um, 17.5 might be too fast for some classes. You know what's interesting to me? I was thinking, because uh, I have my own views, I guess, of stock and 17.5 racing. But then, you know, I was watching today. I was looking at the heat sheets. And then I kind of started thinking about back uh, in the early 90s, I guess, when we had a, a Nationals out at, uh, it was called at the time, uh, the, the track. It's not, um, you know, it's not the old SoCal uh, Garden Grove one, but there was another track out there too where they had the Nationals, yep. and uh, you know that track. Uh, I remember they ran two wheel stock and they ran modified buggy, and I remember it was kind of a small track there, mm -hmm. and RCO RC off road, and and at that track I remember Jeremy Quartz was racing in the stock buggy class, and uh, and Kenwald in those days was right. the man at that track, and he TQ'd modified, and I remember Jeremy's time being very close to Brian's. Uh, in the stock versus the mod. I want to say he'd have been second or third. I think you find, as I, uh, being in stock as much as I'm in, I see that very often. That the yeah. stock times are not all that far apart from the modified, especially on the smaller, um, tighter tracks. Mm -hmm. And this one, uh, the way the track's laid out, doesn't have a lot of straightaway. Yeah. So there's nowhere for the mods to really excel and, and pick up that extra time. Normally they're within... A half second, sometimes only a couple tenths, and that's where we're at this weekend. They're very close together. Yeah, and the other thing that kind of dawned on me is it it's not really the first time we've had in this generation. It's not something new that having good drivers race in stock. Uh, and, uh, you know, and so that's what I was kind of thinking about today when I was watching is I was like, you know, I remember this being when you went to a Nationals, there was, when it was only buggy, you know, it was two-wheel, two-wheel stock, and then four-wheel. And a lot of guys would run stock. Yes. Uh, and so it's not really uncommon or unlike something that's happened in the past where, you know, you get in a situation where a really fast guy is racing in stock. Uh, and I'm from the on-road side. Back in the day, it was the same thing for on-road. Yeah. All the mod guys ran stock as well. Yeah. And ran modified. And it's uh, kind of coming back around to where the guys are flip-flopping. Not as much. Yeah. But um, I see stock today as not only a class for the, for the younger guys to hone their speed abilities, but it's also a class that a lot of the guys that maybe have raced before or just don't feel like turning it into a job, more or less. Yeah. They just want to come and have a good time with their buddies and mm -hmm. race competitively, and stock allows them to do that. Yeah. And uh, stock is um, it's got a mystique of being a very expensive class, and I... I'm not so sure I buy into the fact that it's that expensive. Um, you have to have some a good charger and good batteries, but I think you're going to find that in any racing. You're going to want good charger and good batteries. Yeah, you know, and you know, I think 
what I was thinking was is now the big difference is you know we we've kind of uh, added another uh, class to stock. You know here we have the sportsman Correct. on our Super Cup. We call it independent. We've talked about this before, yep. uh, but you know I think as we go along, uh, this is these are kind of the growing classes right now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely growing at all levels and all the races I get out to. Uh, Expert is, is, is a lot of fun to watch and mm-hmm. I, think can, uh, I think can be promoted more mm-hmm. uh, along with the Expert Modified. Yeah. Uh, I, like we talked before, I think we should do the same consideration for Modified as we're doing with stock. Yeah. Um, and uh, the sportsmen, uh, those guys are having a great time out here. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're happy. They're yeah. They're not. I mean, it's just a good. It's just created us a, a, a whole new level of excitement, just because there's two classes here. Yeah, and there's enough guys to do that. It's not like we're breaking up ten yeah, into five and correct. five. Right. We got eighty guys or, or ninety guys. Yeah, uh, and and uh, the the sportsman guys are glued to the rail when the expert guys are running. Yeah, and the expert guys are watching the mod guys. Yeah, so it's. It's kind of a natural progression. Here. Yeah, and I, I kind of picked up on that too. Uh, you know, at some of these events where you know you see that as there's kind of that trickle down effect. Yes. And uh, you know that's been kind of nice to see. Uh, going back to the truck classes, you, you you talked a little bit, and here the truck classes are a little weaker that I've seen in, in some of the other areas, but the buggy is really big. Buggy is um, huge, but the truck classes uh, are really hit or miss. I mean, sometimes there's just a whole bunch of them, and then other times I was surprised how small it was here. Yeah. Very surprised because I've been over here for other races when it's large. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what the dynamic is that made it smaller here. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I know locally the uh, OCRC, uh, they've gone to a 13.5. Mm-hmm. And that class has really picked up over at OCRC with that 13.5. Yeah, you know, it's it, the question is, you know, what what has to go then, right? You know, it's like you got modified truck, you got stock truck now. Do you have a thirteen five, or does the modified truck uh, on sort of that level does that disappear, or you know, the question well, is, is where do you break it all down, right? That's tough. Uh, that's a real tough one. Uh, modified truck is not that large here either, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I think I think it's a good time and. Um, Again, to go on what we've talked about, I think it's a good time to sit back and see what makes sense for racing as we yeah. go forward. Um, the seating rounds have helped a lot, uh, but the racing in general's got more excitement in the last six months to a year here. Uh, I think the 13.5, although I'm not normally a proponent of going faster, I think 13.5 would be a good move for uh, stadium truck as well as short course. So, uh, you know, kind of talking a little bit about this this area, uh, you know, this is, I believe, your second time here also. You did the, yes, you did the Desert event. Classic. Uh, then we're here for the, the Summer Indoor Nats. Uh, you know, how are you feeling about uh, Arizona uh, again in terms of racing? And I know it's about, what, about six, seven-hour drive from California. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, from the heart of SoCal, it's about a six-hour ride. What are you thinking about Arizona at this point in their, in their scene with the new track here? It's, uh, pit racing's picked up. Yeah. There's a whole different vibe over here. I really like coming over here and racing now. Mm -hmm. The guys are having fun. I think they're, I don't know, I shouldn't say I think, I don't really know what it was in the past. But over here, racing is very much like being at SoCal now. Yeah. And in fact, other places we travel to, there's there's just a fun atmosphere right now. Yeah. And that's a great thing. This Mm -hmm. facility is, I know you talked to Larry Tom earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, This facility is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, The track. From what we raced on for the Desert Classic to now, mm-hmm. it's almost like we're at a different facility. Yeah. I mean, if the track here today, in fact, we were talking to a couple of the drivers just an hour or so ago, and they're saying, man, this this is very reminiscent of the, the uh, uh, A-Main track. Remember mm-hmm. how we ran the slicks right away? Yeah. And the, I mean, you run on this right now. It's very similar Yeah. Uh, with all the running it's had on it, so it's been great. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, Jumping a little bit, uh, jumping into, uh, you know, kind of, you know, how you see the results going down this weekend and, you know, how you seeing the, who's, who you seeing out there that's doing well and what do you see kind of coming down as, uh, uh, who's it going to be in the last lap? Uh, it could very easily come down to traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, the top four guys are on a pace uh, beyond the fifth place and below. Uh, to where even in qualifying here, traffic has played a huge role. Mm-hmm. Not so much that they're getting in the way, 
-hmm. it's just uh, how to pass when to pass mm -hmm. so the driving talents being displayed on how to do this and some of the guys it's it's uh well one of one of my guys is running up good and he's got a little rattled with the uh, coming up on traffic and yeah. you're already tense because you're going so yeah. fast so it's been kind of interesting to watch so what, what do you think is going to happen here? Get, you want to call, call the expert uh, buggy class? That's the one I know uh, you're paying attention to. Expert what, what buggy. What do you think is going to happen? Drayton's pretty darn quick. Mm -hmm. That kid has got great lines. He's a very good driver. Uh, you got Kyle Layton, um, another kid with good lines and a great driver. Uh, you got Ron Duvall that's running my stuff. Uh, he's... I call him a good driver, but more up and coming. Yeah. Uh, but the cool part is, is they're all using different power combinations. They all have different speedos. They all have different motors. Um, uh, even the fourth place, James Gelton, he's got a different yet speedo yeah. motor combination, and they're all right there. So I, I'd, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to say it was Ron, but I, I have a, I have a feeling that old sneaky Kyle Layton could come back up in there. Yeah. He's a wise old fox and has won these races many times. Yeah, he's um, he's he's another uh, stock guru, you know. He said there was a couple guys giving him a hard time for running stock this weekend, but you look at the competition and you're like, you know, he's, it, he's it doesn't really... Away. Yeah, no, I mean, he's got really serious competition. You look at Frank Root, he's a... Uh, oh, yeah, Frank's a, right there, too. He, he's a master yep. at uh, uh, being, uh, you know, a two-wheel drive driver. So, uh, yeah, there's no... There, there's nobody sandbagging You're, the expert right now. These guys are no sandbagging the top 10, 12 positions yeah. in, in stock. They're all they're all on it, and they're all right there, and um, it's uh, pretty exciting. All right. Well, Ron's going to be cheering uh, for Ron, of course, and uh, we'll see how it goes here in the 17.5 Expert Buggy A Main. And uh, we appreciate catching up to Ron once again yep. here at uh, Hobby Action. It's been a great race so far. Uh, we maxed out on the entries here this weekend, and it's been a great time for Arizona. And uh, we'll check in later on with uh, with the mains. And uh, good luck, Ron, and thanks for joining us. Thank you.